Now, a few days ago, I uploaded a video on the Avro plane, which is a British plane that is not very significant for this video, but whatever. Now, that plane had four engines, even though it's not very big. And I was wondering, well, do you really need those four engines? And ever since then, there were some people asking if I could, you know, do the same thing with the MD-11 that we have right in front of us. So let's talk about the MD-11 today and what it is and why it is and... And what the hell is this, actually? There's some kind of black smoke there. I assume there's some kind of AI plane trying to do something. I don't really know. Oh, yeah, there's the jetpack, man. I don't know what it is doing. Uh, it's not very significant for this video, but whatever. Now, let's talk the MD-11, right? Now, this is the cockpit of it. As you can tell, we have a few screens. And that is because this plane is actually not too old. This plane came out in 1990. I mean, that's still some time ago, but, like, not like super long ago, right? Not a hundred years, which we can definitely tell in the cockpit. This is quite a simple cockpit. Maybe this is oversimplified by this add-on, but I think this is actually quite an accurate representation. This is quite nicely made. It was stepping into the DC 10's footprint, which was also made by McDonald Douglas, not McDonald's. Actually, I would like some McDonald's now. That would be nice, but whatever that this plane claimed to fix. And well, this plane is still in use after around 30 years of use. Yeah, this is a 30-year-old plane. Now, something that the MD-11 is very good at is being used as a cargo plane, which actually is its only purpose at this moment. It's only being used for cargo purposes. All the other airlines that used to use this MD-11 for passenger services have retired their MD-11. Varig, UPS, Swiss Air. Actually, Swiss Air also had an accident with this one, but that's another story. So this plane was widely used. It was not really that much of a success, but it was okay, right? Exactly 200 of the MD-11s were made. That's acceptable. Even though there were twice as many DC-10s build. But this plane is probably still more successful than the Mac. Now, the MD-11 is just a little bit bigger than the DC-10 as well. It also has these winglets, which makes the plane stand out quite a bit. And it has a third engine, which is probably the part that mostly stands out. Now, we all know the purpose of the third engine in the McDonnell Douglas planes or the TriStar planes. You know, the whole ETOPS thing where you used to be required to have at least four or three engines in an aircraft instead of two so that if one engine fails, you could make it back to land to simplify it. And having three engines instead of four engines was quite a good compromise since you would still save fuel while complying with the ETOPS thing. You know, it kind of makes sense. But you know, these days we can finally have twin engine aircraft properly cross the Atlantic, for example, and there is no need for a third engine. Maybe let's try taking this one off with one engine missing. We only have two engines running now. I mean, you know, that's, that's nothing unusual, right? Now, actually, we can uh, still quite normally get some speeds here. Maybe we can rotate in 3, 2, 1. Now it's time for a tail strike. Ooh, I think that was a major tail strike. Oh, damn, that jetpack man is doing something. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, oh, we need to genuinely take off now. Come on, we have enough speed. That's a bit strange. Whatever, we have taken off the MD-11 with a minor tail strike and maybe an overrun, but that's a whole other story that we don't care about today. Yeah, I kind of like this plane. Now, you can definitely understand why the MD-11 was not such a big success as, for example, the DC-10, as, again, even back in the 90s, you could fly transatlantic with twin-engine plane, right? I think so. So there was no demand for three-engine planes. Even though the MD-11 is really cool, I like McDonald planes in general, kind of, but this one is really cool. Now, this one is perfectly running with two engines. Actually, one engine is not working at this moment, but we're still perfectly flying like usual. Now, can this plane kind of run like the Cirrus Vision Jet? Now, yeah, here we have the Cirrus Vision Jet. That one only has a jet engine on top of the fuselage, just like the MD-11. You know what I'm gonna do, right? Let's try FedEx. Actually, FedEx is still using DC-10 planes even. There we go, we are in the MD-11 again. This time, a cargo version of the MD-11. Engine 3 is stopped, engine 1 is stopped as well. Only engine 2 is running now, the middle engine. Now, I was very happy with the result we got from only two engines running, so maybe this will be a, a good flight, right? And we are accelerating. Yeah, we're not really fast, are we? And this jet man guy needs to 
kind of chill out for a moment because he's causing some FPS trouble with his smoke. I don't know what is even causing that smoke. Okay, we are building up some speed. This is looking okay, 120 knots. Let's go for some extra flaps that will help us take off. Come on, 150 knots. That's okay, isn't it? Oh, we're about to crash. You could feel the hardness of that landing. I mean, we uh, we are still alive. You know, at this point, we we are lucky enough that we have one engine above the water. You know, that is not in the water. So this one can still be running, and this plane can still be used as a boat. Is that a good idea? Actually, this plane is uh, it's still running, though, right? We are even building up some speed a little bit. This is actually faster than most speedboats. That's kind of cool, though. I think that's what the airlines should have done with all the retired MD-11s. They should have turned the planes into some boats, right? There we go. We're just casually moving along. Okay, maybe this test didn't work out, but also we didn't have a very long runway. So let's go to a typical testing airport, which is Edwards Air Force Base. That one has long runways. Now, that Air Force Base was also used for space shuttle landings, or at least a divert airport for space shuttles. Very cool. Now, the first airline to operate this plane was Finnair, actually. It was not an American airline. It was actually Finnair. Now, let's just go ahead and uh, shut off these outer engines, the wing engines. Now, we only have the vertical stabilizer engine running, if that makes sense. Whatever. And we have a nice sense set here. We can have a sundowner takeoff. I hope we will take off. That is our goal for today. You know, we can give this plane some time to build up some speed and we can just have a very relaxed takeoff. There we go. 150 knots. The runway is about to not be a runway anymore. We need to actually rotate now. Why is it not rotating? Oh, Jesus. I mean, 160 knots is definitely enough for this plane. But this is kind of weird. It's time for, uh, for you to rotate now. <laughs> oh, come on. It just won't work. Ah, oh, damn. Let's cheat our way into the air, and this is uh, working, right? I hope so. So how does the plane fly in the Source Vision Jet configuration? It actually, it flies quite well. It, it flies like a normal plane, I would say. Let's try landing it as well. Now, I've always wondered, does the tail engine also have reverse thrusters? And it does. Okay, interesting. Okay, now we need to only find the airport. You know what? Let's just choose that road. It's faster after all. There we go. Let's get some flaps going and some landing gear. Oh, this is a very nice sunset, though. I got say that. You know, the X-Plane 11 graphics are not too bad after all. Oh yeah, the GPWS callouts in McDonald's planes are so weird. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. I was pulling up all the way. That was weird. Okay, we just completely died here. I don't know. <laughs> Let's check out that landing. Yeah, now you know what I suppose is that the tail engine, it kind of gets the plane into a weird flight angle and pushes it down. And that's maybe why we could not take off. So yeah, only using the tail engine is probably not a good idea. So that was the MD-11. Kind of a failure, but not a failure either. It's kind of a mixed thing. I don't know. Okay, we have just taken off. And so, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's oh, video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, goodbye.